It need that signal. We need more power. I'm here with the gentleman from Warpo Toys, and we get to see the first look at the Cthulhu line that they've uh, successfully kickstarted. Uh, gentlemen, could you introduce yourselves and say hi to everybody? I'm uh, Brian Katzel. I'm Thomas Baldwin. I'm Eric Lefebvre. And we are Warpo. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did this all come about? I mean, how did you guys decide that you're going to go back and put something together to make people who are very nostalgic, like myself, you know, we're in that age range, uh, to make these figures. And you know what, I'm gonna get a real close up here for people. So, you know, I, I think it started for us maybe about 30 or 40 years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we're collectors uh, and uh, that, that, you know, being into toys and being collectors, also uh, moved us into professions where we worked in the toy industry. Uh, so uh, we, we're essentially making the things that we want and that we're excited by. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're collectors from eras like 15, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also storytellers, and we like to make toys now. And trying to combine those two things, we're seeing, uh, you know, over the years when, when you're going and walking conventions and things and, and looking online, you're, you're seeing new offerings of, like, retro toys or, or collectibles or redos of, of the figures that, uh, that you love. And uh, it just never really hit the mark or just it never really you know, got, got you excited. Like, yeah. I, I always felt like there were these parts where I was picking on it, like, oh, that's, why did they use that gradient on there? <laughs> or like, totally makes you it know, all these Photoshop <laughs> yeah. effects on the package, but, like, the toy is, is supposed to be from the 70s, you know? It's just like, right. it, it was never the full package of presentation that, like, I expected, you know? And it, it kind of comes from, uh, just being in uh, this this world of uh, you know even the, the Gen Con world of like wanting to always suspend our belief in the things that we're doing like like we've run True Dungeon a bunch of times the, yeah. you know and uh, <laughs> I'm always into like trying to to be involved in those things that kind of like take me away at that moment and bring me into that nostalgic thing a hundred percent you know and uh, there's no reason, and no one's really taking it to the degree that we want to take it with Warpo, you know, so that's kind of where the, the genesis of the company came from. Now, of course, I'm a huge uh, Cthulhu fan, Lovecraft fan. What made you guys decide to start with the Cthulhu line? How did that come about? Well, uh, when you look back at it, HP has influenced so many things, right? Uh -huh. People borrowed from him, as you've seen in Dungeons and Dragons and episodes of Ghostbusters, the animated series. But he never really got his due, right? He, there was never a line based on just his stuff. And the style of these kind of coincides with his resurgence, right? With the role playing game coming back or coming out and his, a resurgence in, in the discovery of, of his work. Oh, yeah. So it just kind of made sense like, this is something we wanted. Right, give him his due, and, yeah. and give us some new characters in the style that we still crave, but something totally new. Well, with our our method manufacturing process, like we knew we wanted to do something three and three quarter inch. We knew we wanted it to be in this era of seventy nine to eighty one. You know, so what's going on in pop culture at that time? You know, it was not that big of a jump to think that you know there was a lot of. Uh, of fantasy going on, you know, Dungeons and Dragons was huge, and, and those type of action figures, Clash of the Titans, you know, all that kind of stuff was super popular, and it wasn't a huge leap for us to take to say, you know, what if one in one of these creative meetings, 
somebody brought H.P. Lovecraft's work into it, you know, and said, hey, let's let's do a toy line based off of this. Here's some fantasy that we can we can kind of we can kind of go with. So, uh, and, and as we talked about it and started looking, we were I was shocked that no one had done a full yeah. action figure line based on his work. You know, yeah. there's been little one offs. You know, there's been a, a, a you know different monsters that have been done, but never never like a a full line of figures. You know, so it was like this is. This is totally it. This is, we got to do this. <laughs> well, you guys did a, a successful Kickstarter, and can you tell me a little bit about that experience? I, I think one of the, the things that set us apart from a, a regular Kickstarter was what kind of Brian was saying before is like just the experience of everything. So like we created a thirty second commercial that harkens back to that time period. Yes. All the rewards that we did, for instance, like the coloring book or the super big gulp cup or things like that companies would use to kind of advertise or promote their figures at that time. And even the page, like, uh, just like when you went to that Kickstarter, it looked like the old Sears catalog page. So it is an experience from beginning to end, from the packaging to the toys, to the rewards, to the commercial. It was exciting for us, because, you yeah. know, you, like, we're in our own bubble, creating all of this stuff, and saying, you know, it's like as we would move along and we'd do more and we'd see it, there'd just be these moments where we'd be like, come on, dude, everybody is going to love this, right? Like, yeah. it's like you got to keep convincing you yourself. You still have that little doubt. That yeah, little tiny you definitely doubt. do. And I then think, the Kickstarter and, just blew that out of the water. And then yeah. you put that out there and to, to get the feedback that we were getting that, oh, they, they get it. Like, to get these guys writing about it and describing us elegant, elegant eloquently and like in ways that we had never really thought and totally getting it and uh, the feedback that we got from the experience when they came to our Kickstarter page was phenomenal like we were we, we were so happy with the feedback that we got and it, it was encouraging to take you know to take it to the next level next time yeah. you know <laughs> you guys uh, aside from the, the figures themselves you've also pretty much designed the packaging in that same era as well, uh, which which is is awesome. Uh, at least I believe you told oh. me you did that. We did. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes. Yep. We worked with uh, Ken Kelly, who did all the artwork. Was all painted on canvas, oil, all oil on canvas, and done and illustrated the way that it would have been done back in that. And time. he did Micronauts. He did Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. All these packages that you know and love, but you never knew that he kind of did. So it completely fits this this time period. Okay. What about the sculpts for the figures themselves? Yeah, all those were done by Eddie Mosqueda, and again, they were all done in that traditional style, so he did not do them digitally, he all built them from wax. Uh, we worked uh, back and forth in tandem, like going through some preliminary sketches and stuff of how we wanted to look. We had style guides, uh, but he did it all old school, just like it would have been done. Yeah, Eddie worked at Mattel in the early 80s, you know, so like he has been <coughs> through that process. He brought like insight into doing all of this uh, and, and pointed out little things and just I feel like just us talking about the stories in the presence of these figures put some magic into it that, that yeah. like I, I don't know if if other toy manufacturers are going to that length to try and infuse this uh, this kind of nostalgia into their toys, and authenticity you know? to make it authentic. So there's things that we wanted about these figures, and then Eddie <coughs> contributed things that we weren't even thinking about to make it even more authentic to that era. Right. And he also tried to contribute things that was not authentic. <laughs> that era. And that's where we had to play. You know, we had like, to play yeah, the orchestra. You would never have you know, done that. Yeah. The I, editor, because you know he's he's a toy guy, and. And the toy industry is all about what's next, what's new. You get into that kind of rat race, and I think it's hard for him to be like, oh, you, I need to go back to my thinking of who I was in 1982. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I can do all this now, though. You know, it can fire a rocket out of his arm. It can do all these amazing things. Yeah. It's like, now, uh, let's scale it back. <laughs> now, okay, so what's the plan now for Warpo? What, what do you guys... Uh, you've got the... Is the Kickstarter gone out yet, or so is that the Kickstarter ended on uh, the middle of July? Yeah, uh, we're working with our factory right now. <coughs> right. We just uh, 
we just got some images back. They, they're sending over the pre-production samples that look killer. Yeah. It's like really That's exciting. Awesome. And uh, we're getting a lot of wholesale inquiries. Uh, we uh, will be in the Diamond catalog in September. Um, oh, nice. And they showcased our uh, Legends of Cthulhu line at Comic-Con in San Diego. Uh, and the toys are also available on BigBadToyStore.com. Um, uh, they're doing a pre-order right now. Uh, they'll be shipping early 2015, first quarter of 2015. Nice. And we're hoping to uh, stick to our Kickstarter promise, which is like a rare thing. But <laughs> it's, it's hard delivered. to do. Right, yeah, it's like it's <laughs> uncommon. That slow boat yeah. from China. Uh, yeah. But uh, December of 2014 to deliver out all of our Kickstarter uh, rewards. Which I don't see why we can't do that. Right now we've gotten commitments from uh, the team that we're working with overseas. And uh, it's all on track. And then we also, so, so we're also working on our next line. That's what I was just going to ask you about. Where do you guys go from here now? <coughs> That's a good question. You, you've been yeah. through the, the, the <laughs> ringer a little bit now, and you've, uh, you've got the experience, and you still seem gung-ho about the whole thing. So <laughs> you're not like, oh, God, why did we ever do this? Right. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're uh, more fired up than I think we were when we started this project. Yeah, definitely. You know? uh, we, we see the type of... Uh, the type of uh, excited fan base that there is for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that just opens more opportunity and more, it, it just makes more ideas come to how you can take that to the next level. So our next line uh, will not be Legends of Cthulhu Series 2 that we'll be mm -hmm. launching, uh, but this is not done. <laughs> this is not over. You haven't know. seen the last of these guys. <laughs> they always come back. <laughs> and uh, we've got concepts, you know, um, that are in the product development pipeline that we can't talk now, but we'll be making announcement in the next three or four months. Uh, and uh, stay tuned. It'll be. It's gonna be exciting. You might see something big <laughs> in the future. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Now, what's the most positive thing uh, that you guys have learned from this whole experience? What's the most positive thing? Um, kind of like uh, what Brian was saying, just you work in your bubble and you're totally creative and these guys love what you're saying and, and we're, we're all gelling about it, but then to have it validated by all the fans and all the positive reactions and the new ideas that are things that we thought of, they're like, yes, they want that too. So just, I guess, the most positive thing was... Uh, the reaction from from all the fans on the Kickstarter. Yeah, we saw people like mocking up movie posters and different different oh, yeah. concepts and stuff like that. Where it, it definitely um, has grabbed hold to a, a fan base, which is we love. It's it's a like we were saying, it's a recognition of like all these little details that we put in where people are noticing them. It's it's very gratifying. Now, what um, how do you put it? <coughs> what lessons have you learned from uh, what's been going on? Uh, I mean, like, well, okay, we won't do that again. <laughs> um, man, I... Or what's I, been the most biggest challenge? I, I would go say... Those um, I don't think it's been a challenge, but it's been a, a, a confirmation that... Uh, you know, a, there's a saying that a, a, a brand is a promise kept, right? So, like, that has been a confirmation of going through this process and especially doing uh, a product launch through a uh, socially funded format of, like, Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. It's a different format than uh, if you are in your own little bubble, you're this toy manufacturer, and you just make these toys and you put them out into the world. You know, there's a lot more tie to your customers and a lot uh, of a closer relationship. And uh, they will definitely speak out if you, <laughs> if you step in a different direction <laughs> than what you've promised, you know. Yeah. Or maybe not even what you've promised, but what they've perceived that you've promised, you know. So staying true to your 
to your promises, you know, uh, staying true to our Kickstarter fans, you know, like we appreciate beyond what they'll ever know, those original Warpers that yeah. came in and supported us for Kickstarter, like, uh, we could not be doing the things that we're doing beyond that without their support, like that, and uh, it, it's, it's awesome, you know, so it, it, it's just this confirmation of, you know, uh, remembering the things that you promised and, and sticking to those no mm -hmm. matter what, you know. So do you plan on going on uh, Kickstarter for the next line too? But yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not 100% yeah. right now, mm -hmm. but uh, <coughs> the experience that we had yeah. is definitely not telling us uh, should, we should try something else, you know. Right. It's like, especially with us being a smaller toy company that's just starting up, um, uh, it, it's a good format to be in for a multitude of reasons, mm -hmm. but uh, the biggest being like, what you were saying, or what we were just talking about, you know, it is challenging that you're creating this product or kind of presenting this product before it's being made in this social environment, but it's also uh, super rewarding to be able to connect with your fans in that way, and it's a way to uh, really start up uh, a tribe of warpers that, you know, be with us, I think, as we, as we move on through the future. So. We listen. We yeah. agree with a lot of things. There's some things we can change. There's some things we can't. But uh, Warpers, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to uh, when those come out. And gentlemen, thank you for talking to me for a few minutes today. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. It needs that signature. We need more power.